Aye. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Why have you left Walsall when you were title contending and, and come here? Why Brentford when perhaps at the end of the season other championship clubs would have been after you have done so well at what Walsall? I think um, you know to come and manage in the, in the championship um, a club that's going upwards um, and it's an exciting club there's a there's a project here and uh, you know and a strategy of how they want to do it and how they want to do things that fit in with my values as well and that's important and um, you know it's a good fit. What are your impressions of the team itself having seen the game on Monday night and perhaps the start of the season? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been aware of the team. You know, a lot of the team, uh, a few of the team are still uh, players who got them promoted. So, you know, I've I've pitted my wits against some of them. Know quite a lot of them, and there's a lot to a lot of very good players here. And you know, that's what excites me about about the challenge here that you know, I can help them further develop, get better. Um, you know, there's there's a lot to work with, and there's also something to work on as well. So, it's uh, it's an interesting. Venture for for myself and Richard, and uh, really looking forward to it and excited. Mid table eleventh, just the, the the three points off the playoffs, but a good ten point cushion above the relegation zone. Given they made the playoffs last season, is that the minimum this season, or does the bad start under a previous coach here buy you a little bit of time this season? To be honest, I've not looked too far ahead. I mean, it's just you know it's happened so quickly. I'm just looking at the next game, which is MK Dons on Saturday, and. You know, they got promoted last season. I know an awful lot about them. So, you know, the long-term vision for this football club, and hopefully it can be a short-term vision as well, is to get the Premier League. And, uh, you know, um, they came very close last season. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can improve on what we're doing this season and get better. But have the hierarchy at the club said to you, the minimum we want playoffs, given how close you are at the moment, just the three points. There's no, been no ta- there's been no target set. It's about trying to get the aim of the football club is to get to the Premier League. Just explain for the fans exactly what you're in control of and what those above you in the, uh, in the, in the management system here and the owner are in charge of with tactics, team selection each day and transfers. Yeah, t- training, um, team selection. I'll be involved in, in everything, in all, all parts of the football club. And you know, I think uh, from the outside, it, it looks a, a whole lot different to any other football club. But... You know, I'll be involved in the recruitment. In, in, I'll be involved in the day-to-day running the football club in terms of the, the the professional football players. You know, the medical staff, the the sports science staff of the football club, and it's it's not it's it's unlike it's it's like any other football club. But we've got some really good people here with really good ideas. So the style of play is that solely yours, or is there a requirement from above you that you got to play a certain way? I think the fact that I'm here is that uh, is the style of play is uh, very much aligned to what my style of play is. Uh, if you look how, how Walsall have played this season, then you'll see the real pleasing attacking style of play. And um, you know, I'm sure that was part of their their process in, in you know searching for a head coach that fitted that criteria. And um, you know, hopefully uh, it, it'll be proved that we are a good match. And we're about to clarify, sorry, the team selection on a Friday for the weekend. Is that solely yours? Is there any influence on that that you, you have to debate? There'll be influence from your coaching staff, that's for sure, because they're, they're people who I trust and I'll speak to. And um, Yeah, but at the end of the day, it'll be my head on the block who picks the team. And what about any say you can have in, in, in transfers come January or next summer when hopefully you've had a successful season? Yeah, I mean, I've just come through the door, but there's a, a recruitment process and there's a team that we'll, we'll sit down and talk about and, uh, and discuss. And again, just like any other football club, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been the only one picking players at, at Warsaw Football Club. You know, uh, the final decision would, would, would have been my chairman and whether he, could have, whether he wanted to pay for that as well. So it's no different. Given that the, uh, the previous permanent coach in charge lasted only eight games at the start of this season, what are your thoughts on that in terms of the, the job security if results aren't going your way? I've just got to come from a job where you know I was in a very secure p- position. Um, you know, I worked very well with, with the football club there, uh, but there's been times during that that process where results haven't been everything. Uh, we work on performance based and uh, if you get if you get performances from your players you normally the results go with them um, you know so 
I was never worried about coming here. Uh, you know, I thought it was a great job, a great opportunity. And you know, I think for young British coaches who are who are coaching and managing in the lower leagues, you know, it's a it's a big pat on the back. And not just young British, because Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank on the verge of getting the QPR job, Championship Light like used. Does that show the quality of the coaches in in League One, the third tier? It does, and there's a lot of coaches who are going out there and and you know fulfilling their their badges. Uh, you know, going down the road of uh, A licenses, pro licenses, uh, management courses, and um, you know, there's a, a lot of people out there, you know, looking for looking for work, and you know, to to get a job in a championship is a great opportunity for me to showcase what I'm about. And from the club's point of view, please just explain why it was Dean. How much he's impressed you in particular? How you see him achieving what you want him to achieve here? Well, first of all, it's been impressive to follow Dean's work in Walsall because he's been able on a, on a quite low budget to create uh, impressive results. And uh, that's a similar to situation to the one Brentford is in because we are not a, a club with a huge budget. We need to be smarter, we need to think different if we want to win. Uh, so we felt that there was a great fit uh, between Dean and Brentford in that respect. Uh, secondly, uh, I think we were really impressed in the in the process with Dean's uh, leadership skills. He's a man of integrity and 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 and, and a good people person. And I think um, that's a key part of the job. You're not only going to lead, you know, players. You've got to lead a big group of staff. And it takes a lot of emotional intelligence. It takes uh, someone um, who knows how to in, involve other people and and listen to them and and bring them into the decision making process. And how much was his attractive style of play that he implemented at Walsall a factor in bringing Dean here? As Dean uh, just said, I mean, we we were the way Brentford plays football and wants to play football. We were never gonna we, we were never gonna pick a coach that has uh, that is parking the bus. <laughs> so uh, so the attractive style of football that Dean has and Richard have implemented in 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 Walsall um, really appealed to us. And how? Much of an opinion can, can Dean have in the, in, in the way that the team is, is developing throughout the season and any debates about issues that, that come up? I mean, are you willing for Dean to have a, have a good say in issues that maybe the, the, the you guys at the top of the club want to have a control of? Well, I think we, everything happens in the spirit of collaboration. I mean, there's no dictator saying it has to be like this. But um, it's about having a lot of uh, hopefully smart people in the same place who can who can add their opinions and their perspectives and uh, if we work together well then I'm sure that uh, that um, it will end up very successfully. Some Brentford fans would say because we had a bad start we can understand if we don't quite make playoffs like we did last season but others would say we're only three points off there's still a lion's share of the, the season to go what's your view are you, are you expecting playoffs from this position? Well I, f I think it's still a bit too early to to focus too much on the on the table uh, we have a strategy we want to implement and if we do that successfully successfully, I think we, we have a, a high chance over time of achieving uh, our target whether that will be this season, next season, the season after, we'll see. But uh, uh, let, let, let's just uh, let's just focus on Saturday, I think, for now. And finally, for me, how sure are you that the, the harmony between the, the, the head coach with a great reputation and, and, and you guys in the hierarchy and the owner will be will be perfect given the previous coach had, had, had disagreements, although results weren't going very well. The, the previous permanent coach and, of course, Mark Warburton had a different view of the way the club should go forward. Oh, it's been very important for the club to find someone who um, would buy into the project and uh, willing to implement what the club wants to have implemented. At the same time, I mean, we are, we don't assume that we know it all, um, and I'm sure we can learn a lot from from Dean and from Richard. And um, yeah, I think I think I think it's my impression. I mean, that's why we're here today. That that this will this will work out very well. In terms of um. I mean, there is an idea, certainly the way that, that things are here, that maybe it doesn't go with the traditional British style in terms mm -hmm. of British coaches. Is that something that you think, do you think this will become more commonplace, the way that the Brentford Football Club is run throughout England? Um, it was very important for us to find someone who had experience with the English football culture, the English game. Um, at the same time, we wanted someone who was open-minded to new ideas, and that was kind of the, 
the the cocktail we were looking for and which we felt that we we, we found with uh, with Dean Smith. Could I ask you the same question? Whether you think this sort of sit scenario will become commonplace, basically? It could do. It, it all depends on what football club you're at. Um, you know, uh, I've just come from Warsaw, where, uh, as it was said, we had a project, and this is a project in a higher league. Um, you know, and it's got you have to think a little bit differently to compete with a lot of other clubs, um, and that's what we'll do together and do it well. Did you speak to any other? People within the game about the job I've seen, especially Mark Warburton, of course, who, who knows this place very well. I'm sure Brentford Football Club have done their due diligence on me, and I've also done my, my due, due diligence on the football club as well. And uh, I think, uh, as we've all said, it, it feels a good fit. And, um, you know, I like the feel of the football club, I like the feel of the values. And, uh, you know, for, for me, then it was, it was a no brainer.